Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is a tutorial on how to go from the ground to orbit to rendezvous directly from the surface with whatever you want up there, a space station, another ship you're trying to rescue, whatever it might be. This will get you there. I have another tutorial that does exactly this. You go from the ground to a space station, but the other one's a little bit easier than this one. If you want to try that one first, this one's a little bit harder to do, but it will be worth it if you can master these techniques. So get your favorite launcher on the pad and follow me, because here we go. The first thing you want to do is click on your target and set it as your target. And then we're going to fast forward trying to get ourselves lined up with the target that we're launching to. But if we let it go just like this, you're going to see how it spins here. So instead, double click on Kerbin. That will set it as your focus and make it so that now when it spins, you're not watching it wobble. I have my station on an inclined orbit here just so I can show what that would be like. The technique is the same either way whether it's inclined or equatorial. The difference is when you're on an inclined orbit like this, you have to wait until mission control is coming under the orbit. For equatorial, you can launch as soon as you see your target coming over the horizon. Because this is an inclined orbit, I'm going to wait for mission control to go under the orbit and for the target to be coming over the horizon at the same time. This could and usually does mean waiting a couple revolutions for those to match up at the same time. There's some fancy math we could do if we wanted to know the exact phase angle. And a phase angle is the angle between you and your target relative to the thing that you're on. In this case, we're on Kerbin. Yeah, the fancy math would tell us exactly where we need to launch, but you can also just eyeball it. Taking a look right here, I know that I want to be roughly about this far away for a 200 kilometer orbit. So you just kind of get used to how far behind your target needs to be when you launch. And we have liftoff. And now that we are on our way, we're going to want to look at a few useful displays in our user interface here. I'm using MechJeb to get these displays. I think that MechJeb is a little bit more customizable than the other commonly used one called Kerbal Engineer. Either one will work, or if you're using stock, all this data is still available. It's just a lot harder to get to. So you're going to want to be watching your relative inclination to the target, whether or not you're going equatorial or if you're going to an inclined target you're going to want to try to match that relative inclination and bring that down to zero you're also going to want to know how close you are to your target that's your close approach distance you'll want to know your apoapsis and your time to apoapsis the time to apoapsis is particularly important because we're going to want to have enough time in between when we throttle down our engines from where we are up to reaching our apoapsis so that we can go out to the map and make the maneuver that's going to make this whole rendezvous possible. After you've completed your gravity turn and you're keeping the nose of your craft on the pitch degrees in between about 30 and 45 degrees, you want to watch your relative inclination. Now I'm going to talk about using the A and D keys. This assumes you've done a roll maneuver using the Q to get the horizon down like it was on mine. So you're going to use the A and the D to control your inclination and you're just looking at your relative inclination. If it's going the wrong direction, if it's going up, just go the other other way, hit the A or D based on whichever one makes it go smaller. You won't be able to get perfect because you didn't launch from directly under the orbit. It's really hard to do that. So it won't go to zero, but we will get it to zero soon. And by keeping our nose pitch in between the 30 and the 45, we're basically maximizing our ascent in order to continue increasing our apoapsis while also trying to minimize the losses of gravity since we haven't pulled away from Kerbin quite yet. Now that we have our apoapsis up at least two minutes ahead of where we are, that gives us enough time to go on our orbit about a minute ahead of where we are right now, set up a maneuver node where we can then drag out about 50-50. You're gonna grab the blue one that makes it radially go out and the yellow one that makes it go prograde. And you're going to drag that out about 50-50 to try and keep your little a blue maneuver node that's marked on the nav ball pointing still in between that pitch vectors of about 30 degrees to 45 degrees. Our objective here is to make sure that we can do our rendezvous in the sun. We launched in the morning and so we want to get there and circularize our orbit matching the velocities with the target before it goes around to the other side into the dark. 
Since we put this maneuver node only about a minute ahead on our orbit and we still need time to actually burn to take use of that, you're not going to have very long in order to do your fiddling here. You have to try and adjust this really quickly to get this close approach as close as you can. Use those prograde and that radial maneuvers. Also make sure you try to shift your purple ones that will adjust where your ascending or descending node is. You're trying to make that match up right next to the close approach because that's as close as you can possibly get. Plus it'll allow you to be the most efficient when you actually go to make use of it. As soon as you feel like you've run out of time on that maneuver node, you're too close to it, you can just go right then and then try another one one, another minute ahead after you've lifted your orbit a bit so you have at least two minutes ahead of you. That maneuver node is only used as a guide to help you understand how long it's going to take to do your burn as well as to know which direction to be traveling, but it doesn't have anything to do with actually using the amount of delta V that it says on there. What you want to do instead is probably just delete the maneuver node in the middle of your maneuver and then watch your close approach to see how close you are actually getting. As long as you're getting closer, just keep on going. As soon as you're not getting closer anymore, then you stop and make a new maneuver that tries to get a little bit closer than it was last time. We've done that twice for this particular liftoff, and now you can see, there we are. Our close approach distance is showing only 300 meters apart. Once we have a very close approach, we're going to make another maneuver. Put your maneuver node right on top of that close approach marker. And now you're going to drag out prograde to circularize your orbit. You may need to do a little bit of radial adjustment as well, depending upon how you came in on your target. You're going to watch the opposite side of your orbit right up there to see your new close approach. Remember to also check your inclination and use those purple markers to make any adjustment necessary to line up your orbits. If you can get those to match up on the far side, then you will know that you have been able to match velocities with the target if you hit that maneuver node at exactly that time and speed. As you're coming in closer on your target, make sure that your nav ball is showing target and not surface or orbit for what it's selected. Also, you're going to want to line up with your relative velocity to the target. That's the retro marker when your target is selected on your nav ball. Or if you're using MechJeb, you can hit target and relative minus. They're the same thing. You're probably not going to want to track that maneuver node. Once again, that maneuver node is used to help you know how long it's going to be before you make that maneuver and how much delta V it's going to cost you. Most likely what you want to do is get started when the maneuver is the same same as the burn time. This is a little different from normal because you're only going to throttle up to about 50%. In fact, you're probably going to be going less than 50% as you get closer to matching velocities. Keep an eye right here on your time to closest approach. You want that to be going down, but not down too fast. Get it to maybe about 10 seconds, and then you can start throttling up to try to hold it at around 10 seconds. Also keep an eye on your actual close approach distance and relative velocity. Once that relative velocity gets down to under, say, about 10 meters per second, you're not really going to be closing the distance that fast anymore, and you'll have plenty of time to actually continue to make your maneuver to finish off this rendezvous. We're almost there now, it's time to dock up. So if you look in your nav ball, see this marker, we wanna to go to the opposite side of our retro vector and either push it toward that marker or away from our toward the target marker, which I currently don't see on the screen. So I'm going to go toward this one right here by pushing this retro toward it. Notice the close approach distance is dropping the more we go down toward that direction. With our close approach really low now, it's time to flip around and face the target because that's where our docking clamp is and we want to be on that side. We can do that either with MechJeb here by hitting target plus, which basically points our nose toward the target, or we can just flip around and target that pink purplish marker that you see right there if you're not using MechJeb or anything. And then we can fine tune our approach using our RCS and mono propellant. What we'll do is we'll hit the I and J K, L, H, N keys, just a tap here and a tap there to see which one is actually having a positive effect. If you see your close approach gets better by tapping on a particular key, then go in that direction some more. If it doesn't, then go the other way. You'll notice that your uh, target prograde vector on your nav ball is generally going to be pushing 
closer toward the target marker on the nav ball as well. And that's how you know you're going in the right direction, as well as tracking that close approach distance. Once we're down to less than 10 meters difference between us and the close approach, then we can just fast forward a little to get a little bit closer. When we go out of physical time and into warp time, you're going to see the close approach distance will change a little bit. That's normal. It's not going to change by very much and we can fix that once we come out of our warp time. We're going less than a meter per second relative to the target, so when I fast forward and it comes time to come out and stop, we're going to just keep facing toward our target because we can use our RCS to do the slowing down, and we don't want to have to flip around and use the main engine if we don't have to. Because of my inclined orbit, I actually launched more toward noon rather than morning, which means we've run out of time in order to get this docked up before we go into the night. So we'll equalize our velocity with the target and then let it go around into the light again before we actually finish off this approach. And finally, if we select our docking clamp here as our uh, control from here point and then go over to the station we're connecting to and select its docking port and say target here, that will set everything up so that we can use our Navy Fish docking alignment indicator to finish off and get these two connected. This big huge orange arrow right here tells us the direction we need to turn in order to get our nose pointed toward the docking clamp no matter where it is relative to us. We get it lined up on the center bar and then we can use the W and S keys to move it up or down along that bar until it gets into the middle. Lining up the orange marker is the thing you want to do first here and then we can move on to lining up the rest of our approach. The fact that this line over here is red, these two lines, that means that we are currently on the wrong side of our docking port that we're trying to target. We need to back up away from this station in order to turn these lines green. Once they're green, we'll be on the correct side. Now we're on the correct side. And those green lines represent where our nose is headed relative to the target. Now obviously we want to get those two green lines into the center of the screen then because our nose is pointed in the center of the screen. And to do that, we need our yellow prograde marker to be heading in the direction of those two crossed green lines since that's our target. So now we'll use our RCS monopropellant here to push with the I, J, K, and L keys here to push that over toward those gr crossed green lines. With the yellow prograde marker on that side, that means we're heading in that direction now. With everything all lined up, it's time to check our relative velocity. Notice that it is negative right down there in the side. That's our relative velocity to the target. So we do a little H to push us toward our target and make sure we're going a little bit toward there. That little cross there, that little uh, crescent that's moving around, you can use that to align yourself with a docking port. I'm going to choose to put the crescent up at the top, which means I'm lined up with the same way that it was in the vehicle assembly building. This has moved my yellow marker relative to the green into the bottom left, but it's still the same idea. We're traveling toward our target. It's just our nose is the thing that changed which direction we were rolled. Now it's just a matter of waiting until the green lines have come closer to the middle, and then we can turn on our caps lock key in order to reduce the speed at which our jets are firing, and then make our final adjustments to come in on the target. Once everything is all lined up, just make little adjustments to keep that yellow going in the same direction as the green. That way the green stays in the middle of the screen, the yellow in the middle, the orange in the middle, your roll in the right place. Check your relative velocity in the bottom right of that window to make sure you're still going toward your target but not too fast. Check your distance to the target so you know when to actually slow down by pressing the N key to do a reverse RCS thrust and then you'll be docked. And there we are. We've completed our surface to orbit and docking rendezvous with a mission elapsed time of only about three hours, which was mostly fast forwarding. Good luck with your rendezvous and dockings. And if you like this, then subscribe and like it. Until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.